In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we bless your name tonight. We worship you. We glorify you. We thank you for what our ears are hearing. Thank you for what our eyes are seeing. Lord, we pray what you have done for all the people. It is not the turn of my brother there. It's the turn of my sister there. It's not my daughter there. The son of the turn of my son there. Receive it in Jesus' name. Every good thing you say with your mouth. Every promise you repeat with your mouth. Every blessing you claim with your mouth. It is yours in Jesus' name. Your mountains are removed. Your heart aches are removed. Your concerns are removed. Your problems are gone. You have it already. You have what you say. Everybody say yes. 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 I have what I say. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Don't sit down yet. Tell the person by your side, you have what you say. Tell it to him. Say it to her. Now look up here, look up here. And then tell them, whatever the pastor says about your problem today, it's done. Say that again. Tell them this is the final day for this problem. Don't look down. Look at their eyeballs. Look, look at them like this. And everybody said, You are blessed in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. We're looking at Ezekiel chapter 36. Chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34. I'm reading from verse 26. Ezekiel chapter 34. Verse 26. And I will make them and the places round about my heel a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in a season. There shall be showers of blessing. That's for you tonight. You came here for showers of miracles. You are taking them back home in Jesus' name. Tonight, this night of showers of blessing. The night of showers of miracles. I want to talk to you on miracle showers from heavenly places. Miracle showers from heavenly places. I read to you already in Ezekiel chapter 34. And I read to you about the showers of blessing. And it says, I'm doing it now. I'm bringing it to you now. And when you say that with your mouth, you confess that with your mouth. And you claim that with your utterance. You have what you say in Jesus' name. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1. I'm looking at verse 3 here. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Remember what we are talking about tonight. Showers of miracles, of miracles, showers from heavenly places. And here it says, we're blessing the name of the Lord already. We're giving testimony already. We're giving proclamation to our confession that the showers of miracles, they're coming from heavenly places and they're coming upon us tonight in Jesus' name. Chapter 2 of Ephesians verse 6. 
Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 And he has raised us up together That means you are not down anymore You are up you are not in the valley of despondency anymore. You are on the mountain top of dominion in Jesus' name. It says, He has raised us up together and made us to sit together. Where? In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I want you to compare those two scriptures. It says, He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places that's one in chapter two he said he has raised us up think of somebody on the sick bed he has raised us up think of somebody in the valley of despair and despondency he has raised us up think of somebody wallowing in self-pity in tears lying down he has raised us up and then he says together then it says to sit together with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You see, the Lord does not see you in the valley. He sees you on the mountain top. He does not see you in poverty. He sees you in prosperity. He does not see you in sin. He sees you in holiness. He does not see you in sickness. He sees you in health. He does not see you under oppression. He does not see you under all those calamities. He sees you raised up together with him and seated with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Where you're seated in heavenly places, there's no sorrow there in heavenly places. No sorrow in your life. There's no sickness in the heavenly places. No sickness in your life anymore. There's no oppression in heavenly places. There's no oppression in your life anymore. There's no affliction in heavenly places. There's no affliction in your life anymore. And there is uh, no torment of the devil in heavenly places. There's no torment in your life anymore because he has raised us up together to sit down together with him in heavenly places. No mental problem in heavenly places. There's no demonic oppression in heavenly places and there's no bereavement for you anymore because there's no bereavement in heavenly places. In heavenly places, everything is light. Everything is joy. Everything is celebration. Everything is happiness. And I come to tell you tonight, you are no more there, you are here. You are no more down, you are up. You are no more tail, but you are head. Because now you are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Look at this now. Heavenly blessings, chapter 1. And then the presence and power of the Lord and the change of position. You are now in heavenly places. Look at chapter 3 now. In chapter 3, verse 20. Now, when? I said, when? When are you going to sit in heavenly places? When are you going to have the showers of miracles? When are your tears going to be turned to laughter? When will sorrow become gladness? When will poverty become prosperity? When? When will failure become victory? And when with all the sins of oppression of the devil, when are you going to have dominion? Because you are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, because of that, he said, forget the past, something is coming up now. Yeah. Now unto him that is able, wonderful, wonderful. I said wonderful. I'm saying, Moses, how did you have the courage to face Pharaoh? He said, because God is able. I said, Joshua, how is it? You came around Jericho walls. You are not even afraid. You just walk confident and say, on the seventh day, I'm telling you, these walls will come down. It will come. How did you talk like that? Because God is able. I said, David, tell me, you're just a teenager. How are you able to face Goliath? And then before you even threw the stone at all, you said, this day. I'm going to do this. How did you do that? He said, because God is able. I said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, tell me your story. How is it 
Everybody feared Nebuchadnezzar. Even Zedka feared Nebuchadnezzar. All those kings, they feared Nebuchadnezzar. And you, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, your jaws, young people, how is it we're able to say, well, get into your fire and come out of that fire? And I'm telling you, you're coming out of that fire. And they said, because God is able, I'm saying, Daniel, have you seen have you seen a lion before he said yes i've seen the pictures and then you were going to spend long hours from about i don't know what time eight o'clock in the night until six o'clock the following morning you're going to spend 10 hours in the lion's den not just one lion not two not three a pack of lions and they were hungry and you are going to be there were you afraid he said no did you know you'll see me alive the following day? said, yes, I was going to have my life. I said, how? He said, because God is able. I'm saying, Mary, tell me. Angel came and said, you never met a man in your life. And then the angel said, you're going to be pregnant. How could you believe that? Did you study science? She said, I know a little bit of that. Even if you don't know science, no, if a woman does not meet a man, can she get pregnant? And I said, okay, since you knew that, why did you believe what the angel said? She said, because God is able. I said, what? I said, Peter, tell me. All through the night, you have been toiling. And then you tried and tried, no fish. And he said, all the fish have gone on holidays. And they will not come until you leave. And then Jesus came and said, throw your net down. And he said, all through the night, I've been toiling. And I caught nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down. I said, how could you say that? Said, because I know my God is able. I'm looking at Peter now. And they were all in the boat. And Jesus Christ was coming on the water. And then one two, on the water. This never happened. This one law of gravity is suspended. All the law of science suspended. That you cannot walk on water. Impossibilities all suspended. And then Jesus, if that is you, bid me come on the water. And Jesus said, come. And Peter was a fisherman. He knew that you can fish in it, but you cannot walk on it. You can swim in the water. You cannot walk on it. But when Jesus said, come, he came out of the boat and started walking on the water. You'll walk on your water. I said, Peter, how could you do that? He said, because my God is able. Miracle showers from heavenly places. Miracle showers from heavenly places. I read some scripture to you already. Number one, our promotion and position in Christ. Our promotion and position in Christ. Have you noticed that people normally, they talk according to their position? Have you noticed that normally people, they carry themselves according to their position? Look at somebody, he was just maybe a, 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 a messenger somewhere. And then he began to take some evening classes and some correspondence and all that. And then he got his GCO level. And then he went on, he got A level. Then he went on, he took professional exams. And then he applied to another place. He was messenger before. You know how messengers do. How they greet, you know, the people because of his position. Your language normally matches your position. Your courage matches your position. And then your attitude in life and your whatever people you try to, they, they match your position. But now the man got an employment somewhere. And now they made him a director. Now he is a manager. And is he going to be dressing like before? Talking like before? Looking down like before? They used to command him. Now he's a man of command. He says, you go that, you go do that, you go do that, you go. And he does that. His stature may not change. His facial appearance may not change, but his position has changed. And when God has given you a new position, he raised you up together with him and seated together in heavenly places. You are promoted already. Your position is different. And because of that position, your language is different. You don't honor the devil anymore. We don't say something is walking on my back anymore. No, you walk on all those things now. A new man, a new language, a new life, a new disposition, a new attitude, and a new manner of life. And from that position, 
your authority will come out tonight in Jesus' name. Look at this again in Ephesians chapter 3. I'm going to read that again, verses 20 and 21. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that walketh in us. Uh, have you noticed how God normally works? Uh, you know, his miracle power in the lives of people. Let me just give you a little, uh, some few examples. Remember, he's able to do exceedingly above, abundantly above, higher above all that we ask or think. God called Moses. He had never seen a miracle then. The only miracle he saw was the bush burning, but not consumed. And the Lord said, go in this thy might. He didn't feel he had the might or the power. Just like as you are there now, you don't know about your position, but God recognizes that position. Angels recognize that position. And you may not feel it. And then he came to Pharaoh. Let my people go. And then he threw the rod and became a serpent. Got up again, became a rod. And then stretched it on River Nile, became blood. He thought that was all. Because that's all the Lord told him. But now, higher, higher miracles. Eventually, all the frogs came higher. Eventually, all the lies came higher. Eventually, everything began to happen. Eventually, if you notice Moses, he was going greater and greater, higher and higher. He then told Pharaoh, he said, you will see my face no more. I tell you, the time I see you next time, you'll say, go, go, go. And it happened just like that. Because he was getting higher and higher. Now he realized his position. And then they came to the Red Sea. And the poor were crying, what shall we do? What shall we do? He said, don't cry at all. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He wasn't talking like that before. But now he realized his position. When you realize your position in the Lord, your language will change. Your, your attitude will change because you are a new person now in Christ and you have a new position in Christ. And tonight, what you say, I will say it with you. I will agree with you. And if you will agree with me and I agree with you, you will have anything you say. If two of us shall agree as touching anything that we ask, in this our position. You know the, you know the problem with people. If uh, you know the person praying is sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, and then the people we are praying for, they see themselves as sitting in the earthly places in the devil, and they say, Pastor, pray very well, pray very well, because this dungeon where I am to come out, then now, thank God you have come out now. And then now we're sitting together in heavenly places. You say it, I say it, I say you say it. There's agreement. It will be done in Jesus' name. <laughs> Number two now, our power and possibilities in Christ. Our power and possibilities in Christ. You see, if you have a new position, you have a new power. If you have promotion already, then you have new possibilities. Because when you are promoted, you'll be able to do more than you ever did. When you are lifted up, even in the school, you'll be able to do what you never did. You know, if you're going to become a prefect, maybe when you're promoted from this class to this class to this class, you become a prefect. If you're going to become a leader, you move from here to here to there, then you become a leader. If you're going to become a director, you move from here to this place to that place, then you're a director. If you're going to be, you know, whatever, then you're, you're moving. And since now, by the grace of God, you have a new position. And you have a new promotion because of that, that gives you a new power. And that gives you new possibilities. I'm looking at Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 19. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Everybody say power. power. You see, this one belongs to those who have come to know the Lord as their personal Savior. If you've not done that, you'll do that tonight. You'll say, now Jesus is my Savior. Jesus is my Lord. And when you make Jesus Christ your Savior, your Lord, he lifts you up to this new position I'm talking about. And then with that position, there's power associated with it. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give unto you, what? Power to tread on serpents and scorpions. I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Those night serpents are not supposed to be are not supposed to be crawling over your body. 
and those scorpions are not supposed to be hurting you now they are under your feet i said they're under your feet and then it says and over all the power of the enemy over how much of the power all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies hurt you everybody say nothing say that again nothing will hurt you in jesus name because now he has given us the power he has given us the power and can i run through with you look at john chapter 1 verse 12 john chapter 1 verse 12 but as many as received him to them he gave what the power to become the sons of god even to them that believe in his name. The moment you receive him, if I tell you to raise up your hand to receive Jesus Christ and you faithfully do that, that moment you receive him, he gives you power to become the son of God, a child of God. Look at Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Is telling us about the gospel, the good news, the message of Christ. It says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. When you receive the gospel, when you believe the gospel, you receive the power, the power unto salvation. You believe that Jesus died for you. You believe after he died, he was buried. On the third day, he rose again. And you believe that he rose again because of your justification, that there will be no condemnation in your life anymore. The moment you receive the gospel and you receive Christ, the Savior, it says the power of God unto salvation, even to, to everyone that believeth. Everyone that believeth to the Jew force and also to the Greek, I have that power. I said I have that power. We're looking at Second Timothy chapter one. Second Timothy chapter one, and I'm reading there from verse seven. Second Timothy chapter one, verse seven. It says, "For God has not given us the spirit of fear." Fear of the night, that is gone. Fear of dreams, that is gone. Fear of the wind blowing, all that is gone. Fear of the river and fear of the forest, all that is gone. And fear of witches and wizards, all that is gone. And the fear of evil doers and wicked people, all that is gone. And fear of curse and yoke, all that is gone and fear of the old men and fear of the old women all that is gone fear of the dead and fear of death all that is gone because he has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind looks like you're having something today i said looks like you've got something today what have you got? Power. What have you got? Power. I said, what have you got? Power. In Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 9. Revelation 12 verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him and i heard a loud voice saying in heaven now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of god of our god and 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 the power of his christ for the accuser of the of our brethren is cast down to which accused them before God day and night and they overcame him and we overcome him and you overcome him and I overcome him how by the blood of the lamb every say blood everybody say blood of the lamb 
and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives even unto the dead you see what he has given us now in acts of the apostles chapter 1 verse 8 see the power we have got acts chapter 1 verse 8 he said but ye shall receive but ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and in all judea and in samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth uttermost part of the earth number one you have power over sin number one you have power over sin number one you have power over sin and sin shall not reign in your life anymore in jesus name Jesus comes in, sin goes out. The Savior comes in, sin goes out. Power comes in, weakness will go out. Light comes in, and darkness will go out. Number one, the power over sin. Number two, power over sickness. Do you have that? I said, do you have that? power over sickness and then number three power over spirits power over spirits he said i give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and then he says nothing shall by any means hurt you we have the power of sonship power of sonship as many as received him to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. We have the power for salvation, for salvation. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation. And then we have power in all situations. He has not given us the spirit of fear in any situation, but the spirit, he has given us the spirit of power. And then we have and then we have power over the old serpent, over the dragon, because it says, and they overcame him. That's the dragon, that's the old serpent, the devil. We overcame that serpent by the blood of the lamb. And he loved not their lives, even unto the death. And that power is yours tonight in Jesus' name. Yeah. Number one, power over what? Tell me out loud. Over sin. Adultery is gone. Fornication is gone. Drunkenness is gone. All the fighting is gone. Because if any man be, Christ is a new creature. Old things are passed away. And behold, how many things? Also, number one is power over sin. Number two, power over sickness. Every sickness in your life, every sickness in your body, they are gone in Jesus' name. Number three is power over over spirits, all those evil spirits, they will not torment you anymore. The power of the cross and the power of Christ will so work in your life that all those sins will be destroyed in Jesus' name. And then number four, what's that now? Power of sonship. Oh, to be, to be a child of God, forgiving all your sins, that your life is now the life of a real child of God, and you follow after the steps of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the power of sonship. Number five, power of salvation, because that's the gospel. You receive that gospel for God's soul of the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever, who is the whosoever? Where are they? Whosoever whosoever that whosoever praise the lord you are whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life and then number six by an all circumstances and power of all of the serpent and now power of the holy ghost power of the holy spirit he shall receive power after that the holy ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me witnesses witnesses that means you go to tell other people now you tell about christ the savior you tell about christ the sanctifier about christ the healer about christ the baptizer and the holy ghost to tell about christ the coming king and as a witness about jesus christ you're going to bring in many people people to the Lord in Jesus name. Number one is our promotion and position in Christ. Number two is our power and possibilities in Christ. Number three now, our portion and possession in Christ. I have something today. I said I have something today. 
our portion and possession in Christ. When you come to Christ, he looks at all of Remember, you are now seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. All the riches of heaven and all the resources of heaven and all the possessions in heaven, all the inheritance in heaven that now throws everything to you. It says, that is yours. And then you embrace them, you accept them. They will be yours in Jesus' name. He makes the provision for us. He gives us the possession and he grants us the portion. What kind of portion? I say number one is a divine portion. A divine portion. This is the kind of portion that is coming from the Lord. And as this portion comes from the Lord and you embrace it and you accept it, tonight something will happen in your life in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Psalm 73. Psalm 73, we're looking at our portion here, the portion that he gives us, the divine portion. Verse 26, it says, my flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart. God is the strength of your heart and my portion forever. My portion forever. The almighty God is your portion forever. I said the almighty God is your portion forever. And you know, when God the creator is your portion, your portion, when God the healer is your portion, when God the provider is your portion, when God who can do all things with him, nothing shall be impossible, he is your portion. When you have that divine portion, all your needs are met in Jesus' name. Number two is the daily portion. The daily portion. Every day carries a miracle. I said every day carries a miracle. And this special day carries a miracle in your life in Jesus' name. A daily portion. Every, everybody say daily portion. I'm looking at Psalm 68. Psalm 68. I'm reading from verse 19. Psalm 68. We're looking at verse 19. Number one is the divine portion. Number two is the daily portion. In Psalm 68 verse 19. Blessed be the Lord. Who daily loadeth us with benefits. Blessed be the Lord. Every day, every day, I have a portion. Every day, I have a portion. You are going to have today's portion in Jesus' name. That means you expect a miracle every day. You receive miracle every day. Any challenge that comes. You remember, there is a daily portion. And because there is a daily portion, it is going to be yours in Jesus' name. Number three is the desired portion. Desired portion. What do you desire? Why did you come here today? What is it to are telling the Lord? Oh Lord, is I want to have victory over sin. Totally, completely, every day and every night. I want to have victory over every evil spirit, every evil power. I want to have victory over every sickness. I want to be strong as your days are. So shall your strength be in Jesus' name. And if that is your desired portion, that's exactly what you are going to have. You'll have it today in Jesus' name. In Mark chapter 11 verse 24. Mark Chapter 11, we're reading from verse 24. In Mark 11, 24, here is what it says. It says, therefore I say unto you that whatsoever, whatsoever, what things soever you desire, be titled your desired portion, the portion you desire for your health, your desire for your family, you desire for your profession, you desire in your life. It says what things soever you desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, what will happen? And ye shall have them. Number four is the determined portion. The determined portion. What does that mean? Well, let me tell you the background of the story. Here is Saul. Or just an ordinary man. He didn't know that something was waiting for him. Just like you are here tonight. You didn't know something was waiting for you. And I come here to tell you, something good is coming your way. And then something happened in the family. Three asses were lost from the family. And think about it. Kish, that's the father of Saul, had many servants. He could have told any of the servants, go look for the asses. But he called Saul. He said, Saul, I have an assignment for you. Stop everything you are doing and go look for three asses. And then as you think about that, and Saul did not say, uh-uh. How does it mean that you do the work of a slave, the work of a servant? 
I was told the servant, let them go. But he didn't argue. Don't argue tonight. If you will remember what I said before, be silent and succeed. Keep quiet and and conquer. Keep quiet and conquer. And when the father said, go look for the asses, he went. And he went here and there. He didn't get the asses, but he got the throne. He didn't get the asses, but he got the crown. How did that happen? Because, uh, you know, over there, he was, he was looking, he didn't get it. He said, let's go back. The servant said, don't let us go back. We must get something. Don't go back, you'll get something. So why don't we look for a prophet in seer? And here was Samuel coming, and then to, he, they went to Samuel. They said, can you show us the house of the seer? He said, I am the seer. And he said, don't worry, Saul. The asses you are looking for had been found. You could have thought, why did I waste my time? Why did I come here then? If the asses I was looking for, if the asses were found, why did my father waste my time to just send me go look for asses? He said, but wait, there's something else waiting for. You are going to eat with me today. Eat with the seer, eat with the prophet. And then when they got there, he called the cook. He said, that portion that I reserved yesterday determined for this man, this is the man. A miracle was waiting before you came. The Lord knew you were coming, and that, de that determined portion is yours, and it's going to be yours in Jesus' name. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 9. 1 Samuel chapter 9 is the determined portion. The determined portion reserved for you. And that determined miracle will be yours tonight. You will not miss it in the name of Jesus. In 1 Samuel chapter 9 verse 23. For Samuel chapter 9 verse 23, and Samuel said unto the cook, Bring the portion which I give thee, of which I said unto thee, Set it by thee. And the cook took up the shoulder, and that which was upon it, and set it before Saul. And Samuel said, Behold, that which is left, reserved or determined for you. Set it before thee and eat, for unto this time has it been kept for thee. Since I said, I have invited the people, so Saul did eat with Samuel that day. This day. I said, This day. This day. That was Samuel's turn at that time. This is. I said, This is. I said, this is your turn for the determined portion. Number five, the disciples' portion. The disciples' portion. When you give yourself to the Lord, your life to the Lord, you became, number one, a convert. But you don't remain a convert all your life. You become, you become a disciple, a disciple of the Lord. And it says, if you hear his word, and you keep his word, and obey his word, then are you my disciples indeed. And what portion does the disciple have? Second Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. In Second Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, here is the disciple's portion. It says, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. There's no weakness in divine nature. There's no sickness in the divine nature. There's no fear in the divine nature. And there's no calamity in divine nature. It says, now you are partakers of that divine nature. That's the disciple's portion. And thank God it is mine. And then it says, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through loss. And now number six is the dedicated portion. The dedicated portion. Dedicated portion. This is wonderful. Everybody say, this is wonderful. I didn't hear you. Tell me out loud. Look at, this is Deuteronomy chapter 21. Deuteronomy chapter 21. I'm reading to you from verse 17. 21, 17. It says, but he shall acknowledge the son of the hated firstborn by giving him what? 
a double portion of all that he has. By giving him a double portion of all that he has. That is, when you are born again, you become a child of God now. And that God now has ownership of you. And you are now a child of God. In the Israelitish family, the firstborn in the family, they always have that dedicated portion for them. And whatever your portion is, you have got it already in Jesus' name. Now, I've been coming from number one, this one, this one, this is the final one, and this final one, I hope you grab this one. I said I hope you grab this one. Before I come to the final one, the portion you have, the portion I have, number one, I have a you have. The divine portion. Number two, I have a you have. A daily portion. Number three, I have a you have. The desired portion. Number four, I have a you have. The determined portion. Number five. The disciples portion. Number six. Watch. Dedicated portion. Now, now. Today is the day of power. Day of miracle. Day of spectacular things. What, what you have never seen before, you'll see in Jesus' name. There was this man. He was just doing his normal, regular, day-to-day -day business. He was a farmer. And he dealt with oxen, planting, plowing. And here comes somebody else. And this fellow was just plowing his field and singing amazing grace. How good they sound. And then he was just sweating and wiping the sweat. And we're just doing his work. And somebody came and threw something on him. And he said, I'm coming. Immediately. And he said, what have I done? Go ahead and do. He said, I'm going to say bye-bye to my people. There's a new position that is coming upon me. There's a new life coming upon me. There is a new privilege coming my way. And he went home and said, bye-bye. I'm following somebody. And then he came back. And when he came back, all he was doing, whenever this man that threw something on him wanted to wash his hand, he'll pour water on his hand and then wash. And then people, are you not foolish? That you're being a successful farmer. You've been plowing with 12 oxen and you've been having all this and then you're just following this. My said, don't worry, I know what I'm looking for. And when I get it, you will know. I said, when I get it, you will know. And then one day, the man was about now to go where he will not see him again. And then the fellow said, why don't you stay here? I am going somewhere. He said, me, wait here. I'm not, you know, part of those waiting type. I'm a man with drive. I'm a man that is going to thrive. I'm a man on the go. Anywhere you go, we're going there together. And that thing you have, I'm going to have it from you before I, before I leave. And then it's okay. And then they go to another place. And then, are you still coming? I'm going to this other place. Why don't you stay here? Me, stay here. I'm not staying anywhere. Anywhere you go, I am there. All right. Some people came and they said, do you know that this man you are following, he has not told you that he's going somewhere today? He said, hold your peace. You are talkers. I am receiver. You know how to talk. You see, you talk. But be silent and succeed. Keep quiet and conquer. They went on. And then the man now, they got to a particular place. It was a big river. They called it River John and those days. There was no bridge. This mysterious man, how is he going to pass? The man just took his clothes. That thing he threw on him the first day when they met. We call it mantle, his coat. And the man took his coat off. He rolled it up. He said, God, I'm passing through. I said, I'm passing through. And the river divided. And the man, as the man went like this, this my brother is my senior brother. This my brother just followed. And then they came to the other side. And now the man told my brother. Praise the Lord. Is your brother too? What's the name of your brother? Ah, praise the Lord. And then ask what you want. It shall be given unto you. He said, I've been waiting for that all these years. I've been waiting for this moment that you will tell me there is one single thing I want. I've been looking at your life. The power you have to divide River Jordan.
The power you have to handle Ahab and Jezebel. The power you have to say, if I'm a man of God, let fire come down. The fire you have that when you pronounce the word like this, whatever you say is what you have. I want a double portion of that. Number seven, double portion. Number seven, double portion. Double portion is coming. I said double portion is coming. I said double portion is coming. And then it said, if you see me, very simple. If you pay attention, if your mind is not here and there, when you hear that final amen, if your mind is not here and there, when you hear in the name of Jesus, if your mind is not here and there, if you see me, if you focus, if you pay attention, if when the pronouncement is made, you say, yes, Lord, that is me. That double portion will come upon you. And Elisha was looking like this and looking at all of his sudden chariots from heaven. At that time, there was no aeroplane. This one is aeroplane manufactured in heaven. Aeroplane from heaven take him and took that man. He didn't need a visa, he didn't need passport. He just went in like that and they took him away and he said, My father, my father, I see you. And then the mantle that was where the power was embedded, that mantle felt the man took it and then he went back to River Jordan and said, Where is that God, the God of Elijah? Pam! Everything divided. I said, Everything divided. That same power is coming your way today. Double portion, double portion, double portion. Where are you? Get up and get that double portion. And say, Lord, I am here. Lord, I am here. It's a day of revival. It's a day of power. It's a day of authority. It's a day of miracle. Showers of miracle. Healing is here tonight. Salvation is here tonight. Power is here tonight. Authority is here tonight. Everything you need, exploits, exploits, exploits. They are all here tonight. Why don't you say, oh Lord, it is my turn. Oh Lord, it is my turn. Oh Lord, Lord, it is my turn. Miracle tonight. Healing tonight. Deliverance tonight. Because he has given us that opportunity. The power is here. The authority is here. Everything is here for you. You are going to have it. You are going to have it. And just say, oh Lord, here I am. I will not miss it. I will not miss it. I will not miss it. I came here to get something. I'm going to get it. I came, I'm, I came here to receive. I'm going to receive. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And everybody said, The divine portion. Everybody say, Divine portion. The daily portion. Everybody say that. And then we have the desired portion. Everybody say, Desired portion. The determined portion. Everybody say, the disciples portion, everybody say. The dedicated portion, everybody say. Aha, uh -huh, now, that final scene. 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 And everybody say. You'll carry miracle, go home in Jesus' name. You carry power, go home in Jesus' name. This is the hour. This is the moment. Where are you? Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you because of your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your provision for everyone. I pray for everyone here tonight. Nobody will go home empty-handed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray the double portion of your power, of your authority, double portion of miracle, double portion of anointing, double portion of breakthrough, grant unto everyone in Jesus name that are near your body right there, I command that soil for near, come out in Jesus name all that cancer jams that Lord, I pray, all those cancer jams will dry up be healed right now in Jesus name the fellow with the cough for tuberculosis I command that tuberculosis and that cough you are not supposed to be there because there's a double portion awaiting this person right now tuberculosis be healed in Jesus name that lady there with HIV I pray right now that the blood of Jesus will touch you will cover you will cleanse you and all those hiv germs and virus be healed in jesus name 
the man over there will see impotence and venereal disease at the same time i'm asking lord that that venereal disease will heal him right now the impotence you will take away in jesus name uh, the fellow there is like you sat on something. And since you sat on that thing, it's like uh, you have a uh, you know poison or uh, something. And I pray that all the all the poison on your skin, all that disease of the skin, you are healed right now. Lord, touch him and touch her. Heal them in Jesus' name. Uh, the fellow with the with the depression and also the mental problem. I see that you've been taken to hospital or resisting. I don't want to go. I'm not mental. I'm not mental. Eventually, they forced you to go, and then you went there. And since that time, the problem had been there. That insanity, I command you that you come out in Jesus' name. All the spirit of madness and the spirit of epilepsy and the spirit of insanity, I command you. I break that yoke. I destroy the works of the devil. Come out in Jesus' name. And the, the fellow there that has the saw, it started like a small boil. And then after that, the saw has been there. And then you have treated, applied this, applied this, plastered it, and plastered it. And the saw is still there. I command that saw to dry up. And I pray, Lord, touch this fellow and heal them in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm asking right now for that person that you know you are married and they said, hey, don't worry, first and second year when there was no child, is over. It's just like, don't be anxious and all that. Now some years have passed. And it's like the thing is still there. And you're wondering, am I going to remain like this for the rest of my life? I pray that that infertility and that barrenness will vanish away in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray that these people that are married and they're still desiring to have children, your miracle baby will come right now. Receive your miracle babies in Jesus' name. Look at that woman there, that your husband is running away. And it's like the man said, I'll never come back again. If you want to marry another person, go ahead and marry another person. I pray right now, you plant the love for this wife in the heart of that husband. Reunite them, Lord. Husband, I command you, come back home come back home you will not have rest where you are come back home to this your wife in jesus name i pray that every impossibility in your life will become possible i pray for all the brothers all the sisters all the all the young people the older people who are here whatever miracle you came for whatever healing you came for whatever deliverance you came for it is yours right now in jesus name receive your double portion Receive your double portion. Receive your double portion. Those whose eyes are dim and then you are blind, I command those blind eyes be opened in Jesus' name. And those of the waist, the pain, and the pain on your joints, on your knees, it's like you cannot use your legs anymore. And that one that is having the withered hand, stretch out that hand. Stretch out that hand. Be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, break through for everybody your prosperity for everybody the joy of the lord for everybody lord i pray that everyone as they go out of that place today their portion is following them the miracle following after them their healing is theirs and i pray that lord they will not want they will not lack anymore in jesus name the hand of the lord be upon you the favor of the lord be upon you and the miracle showers of the lord follow you everywhere you go confirm it for everybody lord in jesus name we pray and everybody say